in the middle of the woods in my area, which is a very flat area compared to most, is a point that is considered the highest in the region and is little known to even the locals in the area. It was previously used as a gravel mine but had long since been abandoned. The road through the woods suddenly starts gaining altitude until the clearing and slope emerges, and at the summit, several trails branch out from the flat rocky surface on top, only to be lost in the dense pine trees. The spot on top has plenty of room to start a fire a safe distance from the truck and to sit around it on sleeping bags. This was our setting late at night around the campfire with Sound Tribe Sector 9 playing in the background from the truck radio. Throughout the night we were blazing with a combination of weed and good opium to chill out. As we sit next to the campfire on the summit at about 1.30 pm, we finally feel the time is right. We are completely calm and stoned when my friend pulls out his bag and packs a bowl of about 0.05 grams of DMT. I study him as he vaporizes the contents and pulls through a single puff, closes his eyes and lowers his head. I watch in wonder as he is unmoving, but slightly amused by something I didn't know about. After about 10 minutes he comes down and tells me about these colorful art beings he saw running around and climbing ladders. They were waist high and single colored, always changing shape but retaining a basic form. His experience was not anywhere near as powerful as mine was about to be. When my turn came, I was full of anticipation of what I would experience. I filled about 0.1 grams of DMT into the bowl and lightly treaded so that it wouldn't be wasted if the flame touched it directly. On the first two hits, the DMT melted into a liquid that was vaporized on the third hit. I knew I had gotten a huge hit, so I held it in for as long as I could and released. I closed my eyes and while doing so experienced a rhythmic warping of space around me as if the world was breathing. I had no clue that it was truly my third eye slowly opening and greeting me forward. The feeling soon left and I was facing an infinite expanse of grid work that must have been the boundary of my dimension as I knew it, and was initially flat but changed into semi-three-dimensional, unrecognizable figures. However one emerged that particularly caught my attention. In front of me formed the silhouette of the upper torso and head of some kind of human-like but non-human being that was the same flowing texture of the grid work I had previously seen. He was welcoming me to his world. He was one of them. It disappeared but suddenly I found myself behind table in the back left portion of a great room with chair and table setups, like a coffee shop might be situated. To the left of me was an infinitely high corridor. My best comparison is a small shop off an airport terminal corridor. Everything in this dimension was defined by bright white light, like the essence of all color, and the inhabitants of the dimension were of the same color. Although they were the same hue as their dimension, they had clear definition. They were of the same species as the creature I had initially met, but this time I was seeing them in their own world. I would like to have known my form while in their dimension. I was somehow different, just like the being had been different in my dimension. Very tall and draped in white silky cloaks that meshed with their colorless faces and into their headwear that rose like top hats, their cloaks ended into nothingness which is also what they floated on. However, their eyes were their most outstanding feature. They were the only things that contrasted with the colorless surroundings and their bodies. Black was their color, but a deep black that showed the wisdom of eternity. The beings were floating through the eternally high corridor and between crowded tables. I specifically remember one of them traversing to the right of me heading in the direction I was facing. I did not talk to them, and they did not talk to me. They went about their business without acknowledging my existence. I was not frightened by them, but instead in awe to the point that I was speechless. Sometimes I wonder what I would have learned from them, had I attempted to communicate. After a few seconds I left the godly creature's domain was moved into another dimension where time and space around me slowed, and quickened, and repeated in different frames. I could not keep track of time's movements no matter how hard I tried to concentrate on even one part. In the middle of the chaos existed a symbolic time clock with as many hands as there were times moving, which recorded the changes that I could not begin to comprehend. I was helpless and was forced to experience this chaos, or maybe I persisted to keep track and was overwhelmed. I can't tell which. That still did not last long because it was so intense that a strange and strong voice had told me to open my eyes, and as I slowly did so however reluctantly or luckily, I don't know which, horizontal rainbow trails swept throughout the terrain. I was finally placed back on the hill in front of the campfire but it didn't seem like the same place I had left. Instead the landscape held a greenish alien hue that was Mike's mountain, and not at the same time. As I tried to turn my experience to words with my friend, there was a feeling of euphoria that rendered me almost speechless. I felt reborn and renewed. My life had restarted. I felt like a newborn baby seeing the light for the first time, its eyes squinting and unable to recognize its new surroundings.